So I'm going to be talking about the Ryobi 18 volt hammer drill and the Ryobi 18 volt rotary hammer. And while many of the features on these tools will be similar on other brands on the market, they are not going to be exactly the same across everything out there. But how they function is going to be virtually the same as to all the other hammer drills and rotary hammers on the market. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We release videos every Thursday. So I'm going to be starting with the Ryobi 18 volt hammer drill. Now this hammer drill is capable of making up to half inch holes in masonry or concrete. And that's typically in soft to medium hardness concrete. Most battery powered drills on the market are going to be limited up to the half inch mark. You might find the occasional one that can do more, but because you are limited on power with the battery, they can only handle so much. If you want to do more of a hammer drill, then you're going to have to look for a corded one. You might find some that are capable of going up to an inch. Now this Ryobi hammer drill also features capabilities of being used as a standard drill and driver combination. Now in the past, most hammer drills were solely only able to do the hammer drill ability and so they were impractical to be used for drilling and driving because you couldn't turn off the hammer function. Because technology has improved and we've been able to fit the motors in the smaller packages, now we're able to get the hammer drill action out of it as well as turning that ability off and you're able to use it in those areas such as metal, plastic, or woodworking because the tool is so much smaller than it used to be. And if you don't want to use the auxiliary handle that comes with it to help you stabilize the tool for hammering, then you simply can remove it by unscrewing it and taking it off. And then you have a tool basically the same size of your normal drills. So the Ryobi uses standard hammer drill bits. So the base is your standard quarter inch hex head, or you can still use the standard round tip drill bits for when you just want to do normal woodwork or metal. So for your hammer drill bits, you, if you're going to be drilling concrete or masonry, you have to get a hammer drill bit. Right? These drill bits are going to be rated for hammer drills and impact drivers. And these bits are a lot stronger than your standard ones because they're made to withstand the impact of concrete. And they're a little bit different. So instead of being your more rounded shape on top like your standard drill bit, they have a bit of a spade or chisel type shape. And this aids in the actual hammering action of breaking up the concrete. So while it's still doing its normal rotation, the hammer drill uses two metal discs inside to create a hammering effect on the end of that drill bit, allowing it to actually tap away at that concrete, help break it up, and therefore allow you to drill through that hard masonry work. Now again, this drill can only handle up to a half inch size hole. So if you're doing anything from half inch and below, this drill will be capable of doing it. If you need to do more than a half inch, you'll either need a different hammer drill that's rated be able to do more than a half inch, or you need to go up to a rotary hammer drill, which we'll get into here in a minute. So again, um, as well as doing a half inch hole, it's gonna be based off of what type of rock you're drilling into. So if you're drilling into softer or about medium hardness concrete or masonry, then the hammer drill is gonna be able to handle that. Soft stuff, no problem. I've done it on plenty of things around here in the workshop that was soft masonry and it went through it like it was butter. Now, when it got to the harder stuff, it had a little more, a little more struggle and took a little more time, but it was still capable of doing it around that medium hardness level. Now, if you get to really hard concrete or really hard masonry, it's gonna make barely any dent in it and you're probably not gonna get anywhere. I had some really hard concrete that I was trying to drill and it only went about a quarter inch and then it just couldn't handle anymore. So I had to get my rotary hammer for that. If you don't know how to judge the hardness of your concrete, the first thing you can do is you look up uh, based off where you live, your concrete is going to be made up of a certain mixture and typically you'll be able to find what level of hardness that concrete will be just based off of where you live at. Alright, moving on to Ryobi's 18 volt brushless rotary hammer drill. Now this rotary hammer is capable of going up to one inch in diameter for your holes. So if you need to do anything bigger than an inch, you're going to have to look for a different brand and there's plenty of brands out there that offer uh, rotary hammer is capable of doing bigger than an inch. But a lot of times they're not necessarily going to be battery operated because again you're limited on how much power that tool can produce so they typically end up being corded. They can also be very expensive. Rotary hammers are your most expensive drills. Uh, this Ryobi goes for about $170 which is actually very nice if you're doing uh, DIY work. If you're a professional then you're probably going to want to look for something bigger and it's going to be a lot more expensive. But 
Rotary hammers easily can start in the $200 and up range. I think there's some even that go for $800 out there on the market. So these tools can become very expensive, but it's just based off of what you're trying to accomplish with it. Okay, even though this Ryobi is on the cheaper end of the spectrum for rotary hammers, it still comes with a lot of capabilities. So first off, this rotary hammer takes SDS plus chuck bits. So if you're not familiar with that, the bit is a bit different than your normal bits out there on the market. So this bit, the bottom of it has actual grooves cut into it. And what it allows us to do is that it quickly drops into place in the rotary hammer. So instead of having to uh, loosen your bit up and then screw it back down, you're able to just stick it in and it'll take a little bit, there we go. Right, and you just might have to turn it until you find the exact position. But then once you find that, just push in and it's locked in place. And then when you want to remove it, simply pull down on the chuck and it'll pull right out. And this, so this drill will only take SDS chucks. Now you can buy an adapter for this, which will allow you to put non-SDS chucks onto it as well. So it does do both types, but you have to buy that adapter. It is sold separately. Now there are hammer drills on the market that only take SDS chucks as well. The Ryobi one takes standard chucks, but just keep in mind that not every hammer drill will be the same. Some are SDS still, and some are standard size. Okay, so features for this uh, Ryobi is that you do have a a front auxiliary handle to help you stabilize the tool, which you definitely want because the amount of power this tool produces. It is adjustable, so if you loosen your grip, you can adjust it and turn it to where you need it to be. And then just screw it back down, and it goes back in place. You also have a depth rod, so you can set this so that you can limit how far you drill so that you're not wasting any time drilling any deeper than you need to, which of course will put more wear and tear on your bit, which means you're gonna wear it out faster and these bits are very expensive. There's also several different modes that you can choose from on this drill. Now, most rotary hammers will not do anything besides the actual uh, hammering function or the chisel function, which the hammers can do as well. But the Ryobi can also do your standard drilling. So you can turn off the hammer function entirely. And again, if you're using that SDS adapter and you put standard bits in here, you could be drilling metal or wood with this drill. Now, why would you want to do that when you have normal drills? Well, if you're drilling into a particularly uh, thick piece or hard piece of metal or some really hard hardwood, then this drill might be your go-to tool if you have it laying around for that option. Otherwise, all you have to do to select between them is simply use this dial switch, push in, and there you go. The line points towards the drill and hammer function, which is going to be your standard one for doing any sort of concrete masonry drilling. And then if you select it again, you go all the way forward, and you've got your hammer only. So at this point, it won't produce any rotation. And this is used for your chiseling. So when you want to break apart concrete or masonry, you want to go to the hammer only function. But when you want to drill holes, go to your drill and hammer function. Now you might be wondering uh, why the rotary hammer is better than the standard hammer drill. And it's not just because it's bigger and it's just producing more power. It actually uses a completely different way to reduce that hammering function. So your hammer drill, like I said earlier, uses essentially two metal discs inside, like gears that essentially tap on each other and they produce that hammer function. And you're basically tapping on the end of that bit like a hammer would on a nail. Now for the rotary hammer, similar concept, but instead of using two metal discs to produce that back and forth hammer function on that drill bit, it's gonna use a piston driven system to do that. And so a piston drives uh, compressing the air and then it releases producing all of that uh, hammer function. Now your hammer drills tend to operate much faster, so their hammering function is very light. It's a very quick, light tap on the drill bit, whereas your rotary hammers are gonna be much slower, but they produce far more power every time they hit. So there's gonna be lower beats per minute on a rotary hammer, but far more pressure behind every hit, which allows you to drill a lot quicker through material and allows you to go into that hard material like it's butter. The uh, concrete that I was showing here that my hammer drill couldn't handle, this thing drilled the hole in about 10 seconds flat. All right, so to summarize everything that we just talked about, 
If you're doing anything below a half inch and that soft to medium level hardness for the concrete or masonry, then the hammer drill is going to be the tool that you want to get. You also gain the capabilities of being able to use it for non-hammer drill purposes such as drilling and driving. Now, if it's above half an inch or it's harder concrete, then you're going to have to go with the rotary hammer. And if it's bigger than an inch, then you're going to have to buy something besides the Ryobi rotary hammer. Now, another thing to consider if you're trying to decide on actually buying a Ryobi 18 volt hammer drill or maybe a different brand is the price difference between your standard bits and the SDS bits. Now, this is a Bosch 7 drill bit set, and these are your standard bits, your quarter inch hex. So, this set costs about $20, I want to say. And they sell this same set in SDS size, and the SDS set costs over $30. So you're looking at anywhere from at least a $10 price increase for going for the, the uh, SDS chunks. So that's not necessarily a, a completely deciding factor, but again, the Ryobi hammer drill uses your standard bits, not the SDS chunks. And so if you are looking for cheaper bits in the long run, then the Ryobi does offer you that capability. There's other brands out there that offer that as well, but if there are some that only do SDS chucks, then that might be a deciding factor for you if you're looking to save money. If I had to go back and choose just one tool, I would probably choose the rotary hammer, but that's mainly based off of what I have to do around here in my warehouse slash garage. Um, the concrete, most of this uh, masonry work is very hard because a lot of it is well set, it's pretty old, so it's completely uh, settled and it's very dense. So the rotary hammer would have been my initial purchase. Um, that being said, I'm not disappointed with having the hammer drill. I did end up buying it first because I just didn't do enough research and I thought this would handle everything I needed to do. And it does handle uh, masonry work and brick work extremely well. It does struggle a bit with the concrete though. Um, it's still a very effective tool for what it's meant to do it is very nice. Uh, one thing I do like about it is I have done some metal drilling with this tool and the auxiliary handle and the fact that it produces a lot more power than your standard drill and driver. It makes the metal work extremely easy because you can stabilize the tool really well and it just goes through that metal extremely quickly. I hope I was able to explain differences between the hammer drill and the rotary hammer and help you decide on which tool would be best for you. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time on Grunt Cave.